The time is now. A new era of Oklahoma football is beginning tonight at 8 p.m. Oklahoma versus Arizona in the Alamo Bowl. And here's the deal. If you're an Oklahoma fan, which I assume you are if you're watching this video, this might have not been the bowl game or the matchup that you exactly wanted. But it might be the matchup that Oklahoma needs to, I mean, really get fans in the college football world excited for next year. Guys, if this is your first time tuning into the PG Show, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you jump in the comments. Join the discussion. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are about this game. Give me your score predictions. And, of course, if you haven't already, you can hit that like and hit that subscribe button. Thank you for tuning into the PG Show where we talk about all things college football. You know, I got to show Oklahoma some love because they're the team that I love to talk about. They're the team that you love to come hear about. And we're all going to sit here and we're going to hash this out together. Oklahoma versus Arizona. And um, you get to see Jackson Arnold as your starting quarterback for the first time as your starter. Obviously, we've seen him this year. We've seen him some garbage time. We saw him coming in for Dylan Gabriel as he went down to that BYU game. But the time is now for Jackson Arnold to take the reins and lead this team to 11 wins. Not 10 wins. An 11-win season. Mind you, Oklahoma just had a 6-7 and seven season last year. So for those that want to harp on the Kansas and the Oklahoma State losses, which I know suck, Oklahoma still can win 11 games. And they've already exceeded expectations, and they can supersede them even more. Here's the deal. I'm really excited about this game. We have not seen a lot of people opting out. Obviously, you've seen Tyler Guyton and Andrew Rame for Oklahoma. They've opted out. But here's the deal. They're paving the way for other offensive linemen who we have not seen have an opportunity to play or start get that opportunity. Hence, we're going to really, I think, have a solid idea of who our center is going to be. Is it going to be Troy Everett or is it going to be Joshua Bates? I think we're going to have a pretty good indication going into next year. Additionally, with Tyler Guyton being out, is Heath Ozida going to take the reins? Is Jake Taylor going to come in? Uh, what does Jacob Sexton look like? Uh, what are we going to see from Logan Howland? A lot of these guys are on the depth chart. We haven't seen them at the offensive line position. And I know the offensive line has been a concern for you, and it's been a concern for me as Oklahoma loses Caden Green, and they've lost a plethora of other players to the transfer portal, regardless whether they've played or not, right? You just lost depth. Now, you look at Oklahoma on the defensive side of the ball, you expect a stout defense, defensive performance from Oklahoma. Here's the reason why. Danny Stutzman's going to be healthy. And as you guys might have heard on the Oklahoma breakdown with uh, Teddy and Gabe, o Oklahoma might be playing Danny Stutzman at the mic. That's going to be interesting to see exactly um, where if, if he's playing that position. But you get Woody Washington in this game. Billy Bowman's back. Gentry Williams is going to be healthy. You get the defensive line healthy. I'm sure we're going to see a little bit more of R. Mason Thomas. We're going to see more of P.J. Adebayore. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what this defense is going to do against an Arizona offense that, guys, isn't that bad. Did you know they're number 18th in total offense with 453.4 yards per game and number 22 in the scoring offense at 34.3 yards per or 34.3 points per game. This Oklahoma defense is going to have a test and they're going to have to play physical. And here's the thing. Arizona is starting their freshman quarterback and Noah Fafita, who's thrown for 2,515 yards, only thrown five interceptions and has had 23 touchdowns and let me tell you he's been a guy that he's caused a lot of problems for a lot of teams this year and especially if you watch that USC game and um let me tell you he's only been sacked 14 times Arizona can take care of their quarterback he's completing 73 percent of his passes Oklahoma on the defensive side of the ball they haven't played well in zone coverage so I feel like we're gonna get an opportunity to see what this defense looks like at full strength and going into the SEC 
where there's a lot of rumors that Danny Stutzman might be returning to play his last season at Oklahoma, which if that's the freaking truth, dare I say Oklahoma might have the best secondary in all of college football. And Oklahoma might have one of the best defenses in the SEC next year. That's the kind of defense that we're talking about. That's why we're getting excited about this game. I look on the offensive side of the ball. And just like the defense, I think the offense provides so many storylines for Oklahoma. It provides so much excitement. Obviously, Jackson Arnold, right? That's the easy cop-out answer. What about wide receiver? You guys thought about that a little bit? Obviously, we've seen Nick Anderson. We've seen Jaden Gibson. Will Drake Stoops get to 1,000 yards? But are we going to see some Petaway in this game? Are we going to see him at kick returner or punt returner? Because that dude's electric. What are we going to see from Gavin Freeman? We haven't seen a whole lot from him outside of the beginning of the season. Right? Not a lot of production. We might see it now, finally. And then at the running back position, you've lost some running backs to the portal. Tommy Walker has entered his name to the portal, but he hasn't left yet. And Tommy Walker is going to play in this game for Oklahoma. And I said it. I said he was trying out. I know a lot of people made fun of that. No. Tommy Walker's trying out for a scholarship from Oklahoma. He goes out there, and that man rushes for over 100 yards, and he dominates. He's going to demand that scholarship from the University of Oklahoma, or at least more PWO money to make his living, right? Because pay for school, then he's got to be able to provide for his family. So get a little bit more PWO money. Maybe you get Tommy Walker to stay. But outside of that, you get an opportunity to maybe see Caleb Hicks and Dalen Smothers. Also, are we going to see a healthy Javante Barnes in this game? I think the running back position is one of those positions for Oklahoma. You really have to watch in this game. And we're really going to have to dissect and analyze to see what is that going to look like going into next season? What's Javante Barnes look like in this game? Because remember, Gavin Sawchuk had his breakout game against Florida State. And he came into the season with a lot of hype. So, I'm looking to see, does Caleb Hicks, does Dalen Smothers get more playtime? Or not Dalen Smothers. God, I keep saying Dalen Smothers. He's not on the team anymore. Oh. I'm sad. I'm sad. I totally didn't even think about Dalen Smothers not being on the Sooners. Put an L down in the comments, guys. That's a loss. But we might get to see some Caleb Hicks. I know he's still here. And here's the deal. I don't think it affects their red shirts if they play in this game because I think they took that out of the bowl game, so I don't think the bowl games count towards the red shirt. So that's exciting. That's why I think you might get to see these guys. Now, I want to talk about the matchup a little bit because, again, you don't have a lot of opt-outs on either side. So both teams are coming in pretty much at full strength. Arizona's favored in this game. And obviously, if you're Oklahoma, you lose Dylan Gabriel. You lose two of your best offensive linemen, maybe three if you count Andrew Rame. You can see why Arizona's favored by one. At one point, I think it was like three and a half. Over-under set at 64 and a half. And honestly... I think the numbers are about right. I have Oklahoma winning this game 34 to 24. I think it's not going to be a shootout, but you're going to see a little bit more of defense played in this game. And here's why we're going to look at the analytics. And we're going to look at the stats. Do you guys know that Arizona has the 36th ranked total defense in the country? 340.9 yards per game. And they have wins against number 19, Washington state, number 11, Oregon state and number 22, Utah. They lost against, and I believe all these were one-score games, to number 7 Washington. They were number 9 at the point in USC. And then at Mississippi State. Arizona right now could be a 10 or an 11-win team if one or two plays go their way. And you could say Oklahoma could be a 12-0 team if 
a foul call goes their way, and a Danny Stutzman doesn't get hurt. That's how good these teams are. And Arizona is moving into the Big 12, so they're going to want to win this game and make a statement to show going into the Big 12, uh, yeah, listen, we are them dudes, and we want to potentially run this conference as we're coming in here. Arizona gets a chance to make that statement. Now, although Arizona is favored by one, Oklahoma still has a 75.5% chance to win this game, while Arizona's got a 24.5% chance. And you would imagine that Oklahoma, their fans travel very well, that they're probably, I would say, going to hold 55, 60, maybe even a little bit higher in terms of stadium capacity. I expect to see some Arizona fans there, because obviously Arizona's not too far. But I think it's a little bit easier of a drive for Oklahoma fans. And you have a lot of Oklahoma fans in Texas, too. It's going to be a really interesting game. I think for Jackson Arnold, a lot of people, they're ready to see what he's capable of for a full 60 minutes, right? You want to see, is Jackson Arnold going to be able to make those deep passes? You don't have a lot of weather elements playing into factor because you're in a dome. But this is going to be a hostile game for Jackson Arnold. This is not going to be an easy one. And there's a reason why Seth Luttrell and Joe John Finley said, we're not going to change up the offense too much because you only had 15 bowl practices. You can't implement a whole new offense in that time. It's just not practical, especially when you're playing in a bowl game where you have an opportunity to get in 11 wins and create all this momentum going into the SEC, not to mention you're still in the hunt for some big-time five stars in the 2024 class. So you want all the momentum you can get. You want all of the ammo that you can create to be able to go out there, close out the portal cycle, close out the recruiting cycle strong, and to be able to get people excited about what this team's going to be going into the SEC. I think a lot of people are riding Oklahoma off, saying they're going to be the next Nebraska, which is just absolutely asinine that people would say that. But Oklahoma versus Arizona, it's a very intriguing matchup. And again, it's not the matchup that a lot of people wanted that they think is super sexy, but it's the matchup that Oklahoma might have needed. With all the change that's happening, with the offensive coordinator, Jeff Levy going to Mississippi State, Dylan Gabriel transferring to Oregon, right? You're getting an opportunity to play a team that is, I think, more at your level at this exact moment. Now, Arizona, not going to be at your level next year. But right now, as it sits, you guys might be closer than most people expect. And I think Oklahoma is going to get an opportunity to play a pretty fair and competitive game and really show their stuff. So I'm excited, guys. I'm excited to see what it's going to hold. If you guys haven't already, Make sure you hit this like, hit the subscribe button, jump in the comments, join the discussion, and give me your score predictions for the Oklahoma-Arizona game.